Hello and welcome on our STM32 Cube IDE Basics training session. In this part, we will use timer to control our green LED in so called PWM generation mode. The objective of this session is to configure the timer in a PWM mode to blink uh, the green LED to control it. Uh, so instead of using the software code, we will let timer to do the job and toggle the LED. This time we'll use PA5 as an alternate function and we will let timer to channel 1 to control it. Our system will work on an internal clock 16 MHz divided by 2 this time. Uh, so our system clock would be 8 MHz. We would like to keep the same timing like in a previous exercises when we controlled green LED by software. To do this we need a 1 Hz period with 50% duty cycle PWM signal. Let's start a new project with an stm 2 cube ID. I would use uh, already existing workspace with previous exercises. To start a new project I can go to File, New, stm 32 Project or directly to this icon and select stm 32 Project as well. It is starting with the target selection. I'm selecting my microcontroller, so it is G071RB. I'm selecting the LQFP64 package, which is, which is present on the Nucleo board we are using during this hands-on. Selecting Next. The next step is a project name. I would call it G0PWM. And press Finish. Now it is initializing the device configuration window, which is in fact the cube stm 32 CubeMX application or plugin within Eclipse environment. It takes some time. As a result, we should see uh, our G0 PWM IOC file, which is the configuration file, the file for the configuration of the, of the microcontroller. I can zoom it out uh, for better visibility of the of the microcontroller. You can use either those pl plus minus uh, zoom buttons uh, over here or the wheel on the mouse. Okay, the first thing would be the selection of a debug interface. So I will go to the system core, sys, serial wire. I can see PA13 and 14 dedicated uh, for um, debug interfaces WD. And the second thing is a configuration of uh, our PA5 pin, which would be controlled by timer 2, channel 1. We can do it uh, in two different ways. The first is uh, by the selection of the timers. So I would select timers, timer 2. From this I would select the clock source as internal clock. I will not select anything from the slave mode nor trigger source, because we will not use any timer cooperation, timer synchronization within this library. So only the clock source as an internal clock, and I would use channel 1 as PWM generation channel 1. Uh, please be careful uh, and do not select this PWM generation output, because it would generate PWM signal, but it will be not connected to the pin, but used internally. Okay, so we are selecting PWM generation channel 1 and it is automatically by default routed to PA0 pin, which is not our choice. To change it, I press control button on my keyboard and left button on mouse. And by clicking the left button on mouse, I can see the alternate locations of this of this function. I can see that one of those is PA5. So I keeping this control button and left button on mouse pressed, and I'm just dragging dragging this PA0 pin roll to PA5, and releasing the left button on mouse and control button on the keyboard. Uh, as a result, I'm migrating my function, my timer, timer 2 channel 1 location from PA0 to PA5. So this is the this is one of the way how we can do it. The second way is a bit, a bit different. Uh, so please let me 
uh, come back uh, to the to the original setting i'm pressing the left button on mouse and selecting left the button i'm pressing left button on mouse selecting reset state and instead of selecting the role of the uh, on the timer I'm going to PA5 directly and pressing left button on mouse and I'm selecting timer to channel 1. I'm selecting timer to channel 1. Now I can see the pin over this button. Its label is changed to timer to underscore channel 1 and the color of the, of the pin has changed from gray to yellow, which means that this pin is reserved, is booked by me and it needs to be configured. To do this, I'm going to uh, my timer to configuration into the mode window, and within channel one, I'm selecting the role of this of this pin, which should be PWM generation channel one. After this operation, I can see that uh, the color of the pin has changed to green, which means that we've got this pin uh, configured properly. So we've got uh, configuration of the pin. The next step would be the configuration of uh, the timer itself. Before this, uh, let's do the short exercise on the clock configuration. As you can see, the default settings of the clock configuration is the following. We are using internal clock source, a high-speed internal RC, which is 16 MHz, and then this clock is going directly to the system, clocking all other peripherals. What we will do within this very simple exercise, we will change this 16 MHz within this uh, high-speed clock on the, on the bus to 8. I would just change this 16 value over here into 8 and press enter. As you can see, application automatically adapted its settings to my target value. All the system is now working on 8 MHz, including all the peripherals. OK, let's come back to our application. So I'm switching back to pinouts and configuration. And now we will focus more on the configuration of the selected timer. I will do some space over here. Mode is already selected. We will not change anything. So the clock source internal clock and uh, uh, channel 1, PWM generation channel 1. OK, so the configuration. Within the timer configuration, we've got uh, quite a lot of fields uh, which we can configure. In our case, we need to configure the timer to work in the PWM mode with the frequency of 1 Hz and duty cycle 50%. How to do this? We've got uh, the input clock for the timer on the level of 8 MHz, so we need to uh, divided somehow. For this we've got a few possibilities. The most convenient ones are the prescaler. This is the first uh, component uh, we can use here. So we need to downgrade somehow this 8 MHz the, to smaller value. Uh, so the, I would uh, divide it first by 128. I put 127 because uh, in the register settings uh, there is one edit automatically to the value PSC with, which we've got in this field. This is why to have division 128 we need to put 127 in this field. Okay, so as a result to the timer we will have uh, instead of 8 megahertz we will have uh, 62,500 hertz uh, as on, on in its input. Uh, then the counter will be up counting uh, and the second point uh, we should configure is a period so the value to which the timer would calculate and uh, how to do 1 hertz from 62.5 kilohertz we need to divide this uh, 60 to 500 hertz by 60 uh, to 499 and again uh, we are subtracting 1 from the value to be to be put due to the fact that we are calculating from 0. So, in fact, as a result for this, um, we would create 1 Hz signal. So, we've got 1 Hz. The only missing point uh, is to set the duty cycle. The duty cycle we are configuring within the pulse and its value should be related to the period value.
If you would like to have 50%, we need uh, to put half of it, so it will be uh, 31,250. In this case, uh, as a result of these uh, operations, uh, we would have on PA5 uh, pin, which uh, would reflect uh, timer to channel 1, uh, 1 Hz signal with 50% duty cycle. Now we are ready to generate the project, so I just press Ctrl S, Ctrl Save. Now we see that something is happening. OK, let's go to the source. So I'm going to the sources, main.c. And again, I can see uh, a lot of user code, begin user code end sections, which are dedicated to my code to be protected against removal during the code regeneration. And what I need to do right now is to start the timer because my uh, generated application is only the configuration done by me and I need to, I need to start the timer. We need to start the timer only once before while one loop uh, has been called. So I'm using to this purpose user code begin to section. So I would start with HAL, team, because it's a for the timer, and I need to select the proper functions. As you can see, there are quite a lot of them, so I would just limit them by underscore. And uh, let's select something which would generate some PWM for us. Okay, here there are some names, and uh, we can see three. The first one is start just starting PWM signal without uh, an, an interrupt or DMA configuration. Then there is as well start DM, start PWM start DMA or IT, which are using DMA or interrupt generation on its functionality. We do not use it. We will select uh, PWM start function. The first argument uh, is a handler to the timer we are using. Here you can see there is as well uh, the information that we can select this timer to from our settings. And then the second one is a channel. We will select team underscore channel. And we can see we can select the proper channel. Channel one is the is our choice. Okay. Control save to save the file. And now let's try to build it. So I press the hammer. OK, and now we can start the debug session. So I press this back icon. I select STM32 MCU C++ application. Press OK. I will not change anything in the configuration. I press OK. And now our application will be switched to the debug perspective. If you press resume button, we can see our green LED toggling like before. But this time, it is controlled directly by the timer. To exit from debug mode, we click Terminate. Thank you for watching this video.